بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ان دس ویڈیو وی ول ایکسپلین دا کلوز ریڈکشن آف زائگومیٹک کمپلیکس فریکچر ناؤ وٹ از ا کلوز ریڈکشن آف زائگومیٹک کمپلیکس فریکچر دس کلوزڈ ٹریٹمنٹ اٹ ریفرز ٹو دا مینجمنٹ آف فریکچرز آف زائگومیٹک کمپلیکس ویئر ایدر پرائر ٹو اور فالوئنگ دا ریڈکشن آف زائگوما the patient does not have a significant orbital defect. And second is, in a rare situation, a surgeon may have a simple non-communated zygomatic complex fracture, which with closed manipulation uh, snaps into a perfect reduction and then appears to be very stable. So when after the reduction, the fracture is stable it means that uh, in such situation there is no need for redu reduction and fixation it means that there is no need for rigid fixation this technique is contraindicated if there is a fracture displacement at the zygomatico frontal suture now main indications are when displaced fracture uh, uh, is reduced with uh, simple uh, techniques like bone hook or carol girder type uh, screws. Uh, contraindications are when there is a comminuted fracture of the zygomatic complex and that is also displaced, stable. Uh, a reduction is not achievable. It means that the zygomatic complex fracture is unstable and there is a need for orbital uh, reconstruction. Uh, it is a, a less invasive technique. Disadvantages include difficult ass assessment of proper reduction. Uh, there is a risk of displacement uh, because there is a no rigid fixation. Uh, there is a possible injury to the uh, soft tissue due to uh, poor placement of uh, bone reduction. Now, uh, close reduction techniques, uh, several techniques are available. And uh, number one is elevation from the eye pro approach. Second is the perk cutaneous approach and a trans oral buccal sulcus approach and it is also called a keen approach and fourth one is a temporal approach it is a gillies approach uh, in this video we will explain the first three uh, types of close reduction techniques and the fourth one that is the temporal approach gillies approach will be described in other video now, a uh, correct anatomical reduction is uh, required to reproduce the original structure of the zygomatico maxillary complex and the proper alignment of the orbital walls. In order to achieve proper reduction of the orbital wall, the greater wing of the sphenoid and the zygoma must be properly aligned. One goal is to restore the proper orbital volume and to restore the proper width, uh, anterior posterior projection, and the height of the mid face. Proper reduction of zygoma addresses the issues of AP projection of the width of the mid face. It is possible that the periorbital contents may have been affected by the reduction of the zygomatic complex fracture. Therefore, a force reduction test should be performed following the reduction of the zygoma to make sure that the patient does not have entrapment of soft tissues. And the important is the pre and post operative eye examination should be considered in all patients who have sustained periorbital trauma. Uh, here we see that what does this uh, force reduction test mean? 
This force reduction test is performed in order to determine the absence of movement of the eye due to mechanical restriction. Uh, the anesthetize uh, conjunctiva, it is normally done in, uh, in under general anesthesia. Uh, but here you can see that the anesthetized conjunctiva is grasped with forceps and an attempt is made to move the eyeball in directions where the movement is restricted. If a mechanical uh, restriction is present, it will not be possible to induce pa passive movement of the eyeball. So uh, the globe is uh, moved in multiple position to stretch the rectus muscles and the superior oblique, inferior oblique and tendons evaluating for any restriction in the movement. Uh, it must be checked before and after the reduction of the zygoma. Now, uh, this one is the uh, elevation uh, from the eyebrow approach. That is a Dingman lateral eyebrow approach. This is the uh, First technique for the close reduction. Uh, Dingman described uh, supraorbital lateral eyebrow approach. Here you can see before skin is incision, the lateral orbital rim was palpated to confirm the location of the fracture site, which is located at the front to zygomatic suture. Now, uh, the skin is kept taut uh, before the incision over the orbital rim using two fingers. Uh, a 1.5 or 2 centimeter long incision is made at the lateral portion of the eyebrow. The, the dissection is then carried out sharply and bluntly uh, through the subcutaneous tissue down to the bone. Uh, the periosteum is reached and then it is incised and reflected from the bone. Here you can see a dingman uh, uh, elevator that is passed through the incision behind and lateral to the orbital margin into the infratemporal fossa. The elevator may be passed either under the zygomatic arch. Here you can see under the zygomatic arch to lift it laterally or under the body of the zygoma to lift, lift it upward far, forward laterally and outward movement. Uh, in this uh, picture, you can see the Dingman elevator, but you can also use a rose uh, elevator or Bristol elevator or uh, any other uh, periosteal elevator, a heavy periosteal elevator with broad end. Now, a second technique is a percutaneous approach. Uh, three techniques are available. Uh, that is elevation of the zygomatic complex with bone hook. Second is a screw and traction. And third one is threaded reduction tool. Uh, now here you can see uh, a bone hook. Here you can see a bone hook. And this is the application of the bone hook, interior and lateral traction uh, with the use of percutaneous bone hook. Now, uh, here in a bone hook illustration shows uh, a reduction of the zygomatic complex fracture using a percutaneous technique and also you can see a hook. In uh, screw and traction, in this illustration, a percutaneous uh, screw is inserted into the zygomatic bone. This uh, allows fracture reduction uh, using the screw and a holding instrument. Now, uh, this is the threaded uh, reduction tool. Here you can see a Carol Gerard original bone screw shown in figure A. And this is the model and this 
screw uh, bone screw is applied. Now in this illustration, a threaded reduction tool that is a Kerel uh, geared uh, tool is inserted uh, percutaneously into the zygoma and used for for reduction. This is the clinical ap application of Kerel geared screw. You can see here the Kerel geared screw is applied percutaneously. Now, uh, transoral uh, approach that is also known as a keen approach, uh, keen described and intraoral approach for zygomatic complex reduction. The transoral uh, approach provides the most direct access to the zygomatic arch. It allows for an intraoral incision, here you can see, and therefore does not have the risk of scar alopecia that will result from the Gillies approach. A uh, two centimeter uh, lateral maxillary vestibular incision that is a uh, upper gingival bulkal, uh, buccal area, uh, that is a uh, upper gingival buccal incision, is made with the scalpel or a cartridge here you can see a scalpel uh, that is a scalpel or a cartridge device just at the base of the zygomaticomaxillary buttress. This incision is made through mucosa only. You will not incise the periosteum. Be careful. Now, because of the direct proximity of the incision to the arch, it is close to the arch and a body of the zygoma. So an instrument can easily be placed deep to the fracture uh, to allow elevation uh, of the fracture. Uh, because of the direct proximity of the incision uh, to the arch uh, and the body, both can often be palpated uh, and elevated with a, a digital uh, examination. Um, First, uh, what will you do? First step is that uh, uh, the sharp end of the number nine periosteal uh, elevator is inserted into the incision and using a side to side sweeping motion, the surgeon makes the contact with the infratemporal surface of the here, yeah, the, uh, the infratemporal surface of the maxilla and then the zygoma, infratemporal maxilla, and zygoma, and zygomatic arch, and dissect the tissue in a supraperiosteal manner. You will not go inside the periosteum. You will be inside the mucosa above the periosteum. And second thing is, this is a, a heavy instrument. First, you will place the sharp end of nine periosteal elevator. You will dissect, make a pathway, for a heavy instrument. And in the second step, a heavier instrument such as uh, Bristow's elevator, Rose uh, elevator, uh, can be inserted behind the infratemporal surface of the zygoma and using superior lateral and interior force, uh, the bone is reduced, or you can say the fracture, fracture is reduced. And the use of one hand over the side of the face to assist, assist the reduction is extremely helpful. One should take care to avoid using the maxilla as a fulcrum point. Uh, so you will never use the maxilla as a fulcrum point. The incision in the uh, mucobuccal fold is sutured. Uh, 